Hello, everyone. Welcome back. That song always puts a smile on my face. Uh, let me tell you, this show's uh, for families and kids, but it's been one hell of a week. And uh, we missed last week, uh, but we're here with episode three. Uh, we've been downloading some pictures. We have over 100 pictures tonight and two very good guests. Uh, so it took a while to get on live. I'm, I apologize that we're running late, but we're here, and now it'll always be on the Internet. So, uh, again, welcome to uh, Episode 3 of Black Hand and Beyond, my POA podcast. Of course, I'm Kent Rourke, and uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, prefixes, everything to do with prefixes. Now, we'd be here all week if we talked about the thousands and thousands of prefixes uh, that exist. So we're going to concentrate on a couple families, and we have some great sponsors tonight. Uh, we have a stallion that was raised in uh, Texas, and he's in Michigan right now, SLS uh, Awesome All Night. He's one of our sponsors. And then also uh, JN POA Farm in Marshfield, Wisconsin, and Jared Katzenberger is going to be one of our guests tonight a little later on. And uh, I'm very honored for him to be here. We grew up uh, kind of together. They showed a lot more than we did. I stayed home a lot, and uh, the Katzenbergers hit the road pretty hard, and they raised a lot of ponies at the same time. So uh, they have a four-generation family there, uh, four or five generations in POAs, incredible story. We're going to be going through that tonight, so that's going to be cool. And, uh, and they're one of our sponsors tonight, so a sponsor and a guest. And then... Uh, the end of the show, I'm going to be talking to one of my good friends, Jeremy from Kansas. I always say his last name wrong. I apologize. It's Jeremy and Julie uh, Stevens from Kansas, and uh, they live in Sterling, Kansas. They used to live in Hutchison. Uh, they're J and J, so that's the connection. Jared and Missy Katzenberger and their family with uh, the JNs, and then Jeremy and Julie and their four children that they raised in POAs with J and J. So, and they've been in POAs since about 2005 or so, raising POAs and with their kids. And Julie actually grew up in POAs, and I got Jeremy addicted to POAs. So, and uh, he's a lot like me, and uh, that's why we're real good friends, because of Lynn Puffenberger, too. We had a common connection there, and we both love pedigrees and the history of POA and keeping the past alive as long as, and, and the future as well. So, we're going to roll into some pictures here, and I will be giving... Uh, Jared a call pretty quick. Speaking of Jared, there he is uh, on the left, not the tall guy there, although Jared's a pretty tall man now. But that's uh, him in 1987, I believe, yep, at the International Show in Oklahoma City, which is now the Congress. And uh, that's their very famous mayor, uh, Darlin Jill. We'll be talking about her a lot tonight because she's one of them that got famous, a POA without a prefix, but all her babies had JN. Uh, as a prefix, and a lot of them became famous. So uh, we have a lot of pictures, like I said, to go through. And uh, let's see. Okay. I need a little help with the pictures here. Anyway, before we get to that, I'm going to uh, kind of talk about the week and why we missed last week. I was actually... Uh, sick last week and uh, I ended up in the hospital for the weekend. I had to thank everybody for all the prayers and well wishes and uh, I got better. You know, I was there all weekend. I was supposed to go to Minnesota and deliver a vehicle to a family member and visit my dad and uh, things just went awry and I ended up uh, resting in the hospital instead. But I would have probably did it last Tuesday. We can go ahead and switch that. Uh, I would have went ahead Tuesday and did it, but uh, my voice wasn't very good, so uh, now my voice is back, except if I yell, and I shouldn't yell, so my voice cracks then. So, um, All right, I'm about ready to give Jared a call because uh, we're going to start talking about his family, so hopefully everything is going good. This is kind of an unscripted show. You know, I'm just going to make phone calls and look in the camera and do all that, so thanks. So... My helper, Shane Jackson, helped me out there. This is at Studio J. Studio J has been dark for a while. We've been so busy. March has been a crazy month selling Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. And uh, we've been, I just financed the deal literally 10 minutes before I had to download all these pictures and uh, get in here. So I'm calling a 715 number. I know that's up in the frozen tundra. That's up in Wisconsin. So hopefully they're having some better weather now. So we're going to give Jared Katzenberger a call. Hello, Kent. 
Jeff. Hey, Jared, how are you doing? Pretty good. Good. I'm sorry I'm a little late. At least you're not on Eastern Standard Time. You're young enough not to go to bed by 8, so. Uh. <laughs> nope, I'm still around. Glad to have you back, too. Missed you last week. Well, sorry about that, yeah. Uh, well, at least we're still rolling, so this is the show that was supposed to be last week, so I'm glad you and Jeremy were patient with me and everybody. Um, I have a lot of pictures to go through tonight. Some we're going to just skip through and some we're going to stop and talk about a lot. I already showed a picture of you and uh, your brother John there with Darlin' Jill and I think one of the gold prints, whatever that filly was in 87. What was her name? Do you remember? Yep, that was Jan Precious Gold. Precious Gold, yep, Precious yep. Gold. Didn't she and go another, on to be a, a speedster or a good a mare anyway, a good mare? Yep, she was a scream champion. She yep. carted, she did uh, games, pleasure, she did everything. Uh, she actually was my brother John's horse, and I trained her for her, and uh, okay. I think we did pretty well at the 30s in Iowa. And right. It ended up helping him buy his first house. <laughs> oh, really? Well, that's a yeah. good story. Well, you know, a lot of people get in the POAs daily, you know, and people retire out of POAs or just go away, you know, age out. But we have families coming in all the time. You and I probably take for granted all the stories, you know what I mean? But, but for those of you that don't know, uh, John is the oldest Katzenberger son, and he won the first versatility competition at the International Show in 1985. And then, uh, Jared, you're the youngest, right? Correct. Right. And what's your middle brother's name? Jeff. 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 Okay. All three you showed, and your mom actually showed in POAs, right? Your dad was an early time POAer? Correct. And, or uh, grandpa, I mean? Even, yeah. yeah, we actually got Norm on the lead. He uh, liked to show halter and cart. Oh, that's cool. That's another thing I always admired about your family is you guys packed a cart and you always trained your ponies for versatility as Darlin' Jill, you know, won. And then you later with your stallion, you know, and almost everything you guys showed, you entered in, in everything, including cart. So that was always cool. So, and now you and... Go ahead. Like you mentioned with Jill, uh, she always had a baby on her side. Another interesting fact is she actually had 22 full. Right. Uh, so every year she showed, she had a full on her side. Right. Yep. 22 foals. And the year she won versatility, she actually had the Futurity winner, right? That was the same year, I think. 85. 85. Yep. Tell, think about that history now. You know, Gildings win it, mares that have never been bred or maybe bred later. That mare won versatility. And then that fall, her foal won the big check at the Select Sire Futurity. So. And we have pictures. You sent me a lot of pictures, with them, which I'm grateful, but I didn't have time to get them in order. And uh, so there's a whole bunch of them here. Uh, but they're, uh, you know, we're just going to have to kind of talk about them as we go. And sometimes it's boring to go from the beginning to the end anyway. So we can skip around and kind of talk about you and Missy's family and then go back to your grandpa. I know there's a picture of one of his old stallions in there. So I don't know if you can see it right now. There's a little lag, but... I believe that's one of your sons holding a sorrel. It's got a number on it, 512. Yep, that's that's correct. That's my son, Jace. That's and, Jace. Uh, yep, and he's he's the fourth generation showman in the family. We're trying to keep the boys in it. And, uh, okay. Which, you know, he's, he's probably supreme three, uh, three Jan ponies at the time. Okay. Boy, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have the tradition of the brothers, you know, and stuff, so now you're keeping it going, too, because you have, what, two sons and a girl, right? Nope, just the one son. One son and, and two uh, girls. Okay. Just one son and one girl, one oh. each. Yeah. Oh, well, I thought you adopted one. I don't know. It's been a long week. <laughs> well, that's okay. Sometimes so, I feel like I got more than two. Right. I bet. Well, that's how the family, your mom used to do that. She used to bring kids that weren't hers to the shows. After you guys started aging out, she kept going with other kids. So, um, Who is this POA he's holding here? Maybe you mentioned it, but... Uh, so this is uh, Jan to be fabulous. And okay. She's actually out of my stallion, uh, Tabasco Gold. Right, we'll be and looking Jace, at him. Yep, and Jace just uh, actually passed his horse on to a young POA family uh, from like Milwaukee. So oh, okay. Like young girl showing her this year. She's well, actually, I think, a nine-year-old mare. Okay, well, that's cool. Yep, nice star, pretty headed there. Okay, there's, uh, are you seeing this in real time? There's a leopard doing a barrel. Well, it's not, they're not updated yet, but I believe okay. that would probably be my daughter and uh, Dan to be gorgeous. Okay. Another, so another, another one, one of the, yeah. So I want to talk about. Gold and a lot of the mares um, go back to the Darling Jill. And right. The right. Right. Uh, 
you know, Darl and Jill was basically the foundation, and we're talking about prefixes too tonight, and then we're also talking about, you know, JN and JNJ is the two I picked to talk about the most. And uh, But it was ironic that the mayor that started you guys going really didn't have a prefix, Darl and Jill. Uh, but, you know, a lot of POAs don't. My family didn't use prefixes. A lot of families don't, you know. And, uh, or some decide to, and then they quit or change. That happened a lot in the 80s. Uh, I do think it is smart for marketing to use one. Uh, but, you know, and then you can put the, the pedigree on it too, like gold or whatever, you know, or Darlin, put her name on there, which you guys did several times. So uh, when your mom crossed Darlin Jill to gold prints, that kind of changed POAs a lot. And also your, uh, your other mayor, you guys had quite a few good mayors. Who was the little mayor? You, uh, Ghosties, or yeah, Ghosties yeah, mom, right? right? Triple R Siri yeah, Ghost. Uh, Correct. Triple R series ghost, ghosty. Yeah, ghosty. And that was my first eight and under pony. And she also had a mare by her school side most of her show career. Right. She had a mare. And then she she produced uh, Ghost of Gold, who you called Goldie, right? Correct. Right. And a lot of people called him Ghosty because it was Ghost of Gold, but it really his mom was Ghosty, yeah. So and we have lots of pictures of him tonight, too. I do, don't really know what's coming up next. Another gaming picture here. A lot of these are homebreds. I think that might be just the gold rush, but I'll come back to some of these. Yep, there's just the gold. Jan, just the gold rush. Um, now, he was by uh, Gold Rush, right? Jan Gold Rush? Correct. That okay. Was the winner. Right. Was so this would be a, a granddaughter of Darlin Jill. And by, yep, that's yeah. actually Darlin Jill and Ghost the Gold. This was one of her, their last combinations. Okay. And he was one, one of the best process. small gildings ever. I mean, he's in the Hall of Fame, has been for a long time. Uh, he he carried a lot of people to uh, to titles, and he just kept. You know, when he was young, he was a very beautiful color in the front. Of course, a lot of people are POAs rolling out, but he still had those lightning marks and those big spots, even as an old dude. But uh, he was just a cool little gilding. He wasn't very tall, was he? Or, nope. He uh, was uh, fifty-one and a half, and yeah. like you said, with his color. We could not put him in the most colorful class, and he always did quite well. And right, thought she was one of a kind. Right. Well, his mother or her grandmother, you know, was so loud colored, and then uh, of course her famous son, Gold Rush, had those big spots, as we'll see later. And then Ghost of Gold was a unique color, so he's got a lot of color genetics in him with the Super Sun and Gold prints. You know, a lot of a lot of Appaloosa color genetics. So, okay, here's a. A young one with a show halter on standing in front of a pond with a fence, a fence behind her might be. Okay. A... <laughs> There's a little bit of lag. There's a little bit of there. lag, yeah. yeah. So while we're waiting for the lag, so your uh, grandfather was Art Schoenfeld, and he got in POA as what, in the late 50s, early 60s, right? Correct. In 1954, he actually helped find uh found the WPOAC which is the Wisconsin branch of okay America. so all right and my grandpa Art, so that was the first generation to start all this off right and his original farm name was actually Circle S Circle S okay that's cool all right so and the I, screen that's come up is uh Impulsive Gold Patrick and this is actually one out of the Rogers farm okay well so that's we a, actually go ahead picked him up on the way back from an international because my son was looking for a training project Okay. So we, we always like to stop by the Rogers because right. we have some great POAs and the bloodlines do well. Right. Well, that was I was going to interlude to that. That's the perfect time. So when you guys started breeding to Gold Prince, you know, he started out in Minnesota, and then he went to Iowa to Rogers. And I believe your family leased him a couple of years and brought him to Wisconsin, right, to breed mares to him? Correct. Right. The first two mares we bred was uh, – Darwin Jill and Ghost of Gold. And right. My mom actually went down to visit him and stayed in the camper with her mares in the trailer. And <laughs> it's quite a trip. Right. Well, and you guys got a lot of famous Gold Prince offspring from, from using him, and that was a Rogers connection. And then later you got Tabasco Gold, Gold from Jan and Dean, and he's a very beautiful, uniquely marked POA. He was a stallion you showed as an adult, right, in JPFC? Correct. Yeah. And he'll be coming up. And then this guy here you picked up. So, yeah, you guys have had a good uh, good relationship with the Rogers. Of course, we lost Dean quite a few years ago, but Jan's still breeding. 
Okay, now we got one jumping over a fence. I'm just going to start scrolling because I got 165 pictures yep. to go through. And I can I can guess what that one is. I believe this is Jan Sierra Gold, and that's actually the Bloom Quest uh, the lacrosse is down. Okay, so that's another right. Goldie daughter. Okay, now we got some girls shaking hands. Good sportsmanship there. So that's one of your daughters, I think. And uh, there's a white one on the left and a leopard looking at the camera, and they're in an arena like a warm up arena shaking hands. So. And yeah, then and that just kind of shows the camaraderie of these girls. Right. They're actually two competitors, and they're always best friends outside the ring and compete to the high levels in the ring. Right. One of my earliest memories of you is you're about three years younger than me, but I remember about 85 showing, you were showing uh, Goldie, and I was showing one of our Colts that didn't grow up to be that much. But we got in POA as about 82. So in 85, we were still pretty green, you know. But I remember showing against you and your mom and then John. You know, of course, John was so much older than us. I remember him riding, thinking, wow, you know. <laughs> so, but then, you know, as I aged out, I seen you, watch you ride, you know, all, all the way through. And uh, now there's a picture here with your family. There's a Palomino on the left, and then a, a gold, just the gold rush is on the right, and there's a roan in the middle in yep. Native American. So, yeah, this is a Midwest horse fair in Wisconsin, and the okay. one on the left is actually, I don't know if you're familiar with the Jacobson family out of Wisconsin. Yep. But uh, they purchased the daughter out of the basket gold, and that's to be crowned in roses, Jan. Oh, okay. Roses Jan and crowned in roses. Okay. Yep, she looks a nice, looks like a nice looking mare. Oh, okay. Yep. And uh, my son there in our traditional Native American costume that's actually been passed on through myself and my son too, and he's on Jan Mighty Diva, and we know Rusty on the right. Okay. Yep. And there, there again, that's not a POA event. That's the famous Wisconsin Midwest Horse Fair, so that's good advertising for POAs. So I believe this is your son. Uh, I'm doing a barrel. I'm thinking that's him on kind of a chestnut. It's in an arena. So, and then I'm going to go through. You'll see it. Okay, now here's a good one. Here's you driving uh, JN Ghost of Gold. So you, you have good posture there. So, <laughs> and it's on the side that his belt was. You know, he had the, I call it a belt. It's a cluster of spots, you know, but that made him really unique. And then Palomino's hadn't really kicked in in the POAs. You know, a funny fact, another thing newer POA people won't realize, a lot of early POA breeders uh, stayed away from Palomino and the lighter colors, even buckskins and stuff, because they just didn't think there was some gray issues we had with POAs and stuff, and they were trying to breed the dark colors. You know, and then all of a sudden in the 70s, here come gold prints, really. And then, of course, Gene Carr pushed a lot of Palominos. You guys had a lot of beautiful Palominos, but... He's one of the most unique Palominos in the breed with that cluster of spots, you know, and his and his white legs and everything. So, but there's an example of you in a cart at a show. I mean, and you're you're a little guy there. You're not very. He must be young too. Then he's probably two or three. I'm guessing. Yep, and it's funny how you grow up and you recognize uh, where you are from the ring. This is in Oklahoma City. And yeah. I want to say eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell that brown mark. On the on the fence there, that's Oklahoma City Gary Hamilton photo, so a real nice professional photo. Uh, okay, here's Judy, uh, the matriarch there, and uh, so your mom, and uh, she's standing looking at a leopard. There's a tree in the background. She looks like yep, she's telling him how to stand. She's giving him the look. <laughs> yep, and that's one of her favorites. That's again just an old rush here at the Colorado World Show. And oh, okay. I had to take one of them. I had to sneak one on, like you said, the matriarch in there, dude. He's the one that drives us all and keeps us all going. Right, right. I remember her dragging you around when you were little. You might get embarrassed me telling you this, but, you know, <laughs> you were kind of wild sometimes, but you were the youngest baby, you know, just like I was. So you kind of thought you were special maybe like I did but because you were the baby of the family. But, uh, okay, yeah, here's – go ahead. With POA, with POA camp, you know, how often the kids want to hang out with their parents until they're 18 years old and it's a unique experience. Experience and I wanted that. You know, Judy did it to me. I wanted to do it to my kids as well. Right. Well, that's the thing. Like my dad and I, we have such a great relationship. I do with my whole family. But my dad and I traveling down the road to look at mares and stuff and going to shows. It was our thing, you know. And talking till midnight or one in the morning about breeding and different crosses. And you know, the relationship we had when I was in my twenties, thirties, and even today is because of POAs. You know, and how we bonded. And uh, we can talk about anything because. We talk so much about the POAs. So, 
here's a Congress picture of your, uh, your kids. Uh, just the gold rush again. He's going to be in a lot of these pictures, rightfully so. And then your son's mounted on uh, kind of a red roan there. There's yeah, saddles. That'd be Jay and, and, yeah, that'd be Jay and Mighty D, then. She's yeah. actually a uh, granddaughter of Erwin Jill as well. Okay, Boy. Mighty Mighty Diva. Well, they cleaned up at that show. I remember doing the statistics, and I kept having to put tallies behind JN, a whole bunch of tallies that year. And you guys did it yourself. That was the cool thing about it, you know, is you actually want them for your own breeding program. So um, there's Gold Rush again. Maybe Cannon Falls or somewhere like that. He's almost blurry. He's going so fast. That's with your daughter, I think. Okay, here's I'm I'm at a picture now. Shirley Rice took it, so you know it's a, a history picture, 1962. This was Art's POA stallion, I believe, uh, the blanketed one. Your gra your grandfather's POA stallion, wasn't he? Correct. Oh. What's his name? Was it Apollo oh, Acre or something? I want to say Paul War Chief, and I'll probably get in trouble for getting that wrong. And I had pa it. It's Paul War Chief. I'm pretty sure you're right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. good. I'd hate to get that one wrong. <laughs> I, th I think that's right. I, you know, I lost a few brain cells the last couple of weeks, but I think that's right. And I've had this picture before. I wish I had the picture of him standing in the arena with his hat off, but I don't think that one got in here. It, you know, when you're my age and trying to set up all this technology, and, it, and then I'm working all day, and I had some last-minute deals I had to finance tonight at my job, you know, and the job that pays the bills, and I, I always get rushed at the end. But I try to put out as many good photos as I can. So here's 87 when uh, Ghost of Gold was a two-year-old. And uh, I think she picked, who was that riding him that year at the Futurity in Sale? That was Tammy Neblock. Today. That's and, Tammy uh, Neblock, the famous Neblock girls from uh, Illinois. Yep, so there she is. And uh, that was cool there again, you know, she, she rode one of your guys and then you kept him his whole life as a stallion. How old was Goldie when he passed away? Oh, God, he was in his teens for sure. Oh, yeah, I thought he was up there, yeah. And, I mean, he you showed him a million miles. I mean, he covered a lot of, if he had a passport, you know, or a suitcase, he would have a lot of stamps on it from all the states he was in. So, now here's Darlin' Jill, I believe, jumping. Uh, an older picture. I'm pretty sure that's her. Okay, I had to get some of my brother in here, and that's exactly <laughs> that arena. That's from Des Moines, Iowa, and that's John. And yeah. And day and he right. was probably a fairly young mare there, five or six years old. Right. Yeah. She looks kind of young because she, she just kept growing for a while body-wise. She she was a massive mare, but she, she put on mass for years, I think, you know, and her some of her sons did that too. There she is when she was still pretty dark in the front, uh, really early snapshot on a on a cart. So, okay, yep, now. That's again. That's again where we all started. That's our first, first car horse was Darwin Joe. Right. John at the range. Yeah. John at the range. If she wouldn't have been such a good POA, your guys' story might have been. I know you had the history anyway with Judy growing up in POAs, but she really helped you guys launch, you know, the career with this guy right here. Here's uh, Jan Goldrush. He was a 1985 Colt. He won the Select Sire for Charity. Here he is at, the, I think, the Mid America in Texas. Right, in 86 is a yearling? Correct. Yep, John's holding him, and you're holding all the swag there, all the trophies. Yep, he was a powerful dude. It's kind of a sad story. I don't want to get too bogged down with sad stories, but he passed away fairly young, didn't he, uh, Gold Rush? Uh, yes, I actually had rode two stallions for a time there. Yeah. And uh, Rush was kind of the big, powerful one, and Goldie was a little more refined and elegant. Right. And... Uh, we were actually at a horse show with both stallions, and uh, we had a bad experience with Collis and Gold Rush, and he was cut down way too early. Right. Yeah, he was, uh, if ever there was a horse that showed his bloodlines, Super Sun and uh, Gold Prince, Gold Prince being his sire, and he was a, you know, big spotted Palomino Leopard, and then Darlin' Jill was by Super Sun, who uh, had a tremendous impact in POAs, uh, a lot because of Darlin', a lot of people gravitated to him and then and bred to him in POA. And, uh, you know, he looked like a he looked like an Appaloosa, you know, and he and his spots, those big old spots like they had. Um, I remember being a ring steward at a show in uh, Albert Lee or Austin, and he was there, and Gold Rush was there, and Wayne Latch, you know, he grew up in POAs. His uh, mom Helen was a famous POA person, secretary for years and years, but he was judging, 
and I was helping him out as the ring steward. And uh, he said, who's got these POAs? They remind me, you know, the, the when POAs used to have a lot of color. He said, <laughs> you know, because before the height changed and stuff. So he said, they remind me of the color I was showed when I was a kid. And I, I told him who you guys were. Of course, I think he knew your mom anyway. But that was a funny story I thought I'd tell. There he is in the, as an adult. Your mom's holding him, and he's all filled out. You know, he was a husky dude like his mom. So, uh, But he did give you just a gold rush that you got to keep for a long time. So that was good. Now, here's a picture after you quit showing uh, as a youth of uh, Ghost of Gold. So he's at the International, one of the Wisconsin, one of the Madison Internationals. So, Welcome. This is Jesse Jensen. Uh, like yeah. you said, my mom always picked up more kids because she had lots of ponies and uh, promoted right. 4-H a lot. And bring any girl that was passionate about riding and horses, she would, uh, you know, bring them along and right. the ropes. Yeah, and there's a saddle and a breastplate and a, a blanket. She won a lot of stuff on him. So, yeah, that was good. And meanwhile, you guys were still using him as your main breeding stallion at the time, right? Correct. Yeah. So. Let's see what we got. Oh, here's uh, here's your beautiful wife, Missy. She's always been nice to me when I see her at events and stuff. I don't know her very well, but she's so uh, kind and was going to send pictures and stuff. You beat her to it, but uh, she's on JN Mighty Diva in this picture. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yep, she started showing, uh, you know, grew up around horses her whole life, but when she got introduced to our world, it was... It was a whole new world, and got her riding and everything else, and she really enjoyed the POA breed as well. Right, and that's cool. Now she's yeah, yeah, helped raise the kids in it, and you guys stayed in it. That's that's cool. You guys were neighbors, weren't you? Or close growing up? You're correct. The next door. Next you door. Know, she always, <laughs> wow. She always, she always trail rode, and I always went down the road in the horse trailer to go to shows, and I wanted to do what she was doing, and she wanted to do what I was doing. Right, that's cool. And now it's so, it's happening, so... Uh, the, the neat thing about this, Kent, is this is still the JPSC, as you can see, I, you know, JPSC awards with the pictures for it, but, you know, we always, um, the JPSC program was started uh, quite a while ago to get these quality bred horses and get them trained for youth, and uh, we right. kind of, you know, a little selfish, we train them, and we turn them over to our kids, but a lot of them went out to the market. And, right. And, you know, and it kept some people around, too. You know, it, kept, it helped the JPFC. I know we're full-blown, you know, got a lot of adult classes now. But the JPFC was the bridge to keep some graduates in it and then to get these ponies trained uh, where we, you know, so they could be for the kids and stuff. And, and it's worked. It's, it's definitely worked. So, okay, here's Jay and Gold Return. I remember that, P.O. This is an ad. It's got a bunch of trophies and stuff on it, so... Yeah, I'm just kind of showing you, you know, I figured I'd give you one that showed all the GM names that were out there, and this is one that I have. Right. You kind of see it. Right. I'm going to scroll through here. Here's the one we seen earlier as an adult. Here she is as a, a filly, uh, Jan, to be crowned in roses. That's the one you talked about that was at the horse fair, the Palomino. That's correct. Yeah. And I believe she won, like, the Breeders' Challenge uh, in hand trail, so she was a good okay. player in my basketball. Yeah. yeah. She's a she's a beautiful filly, yeah. Okay, here's another cool family picture. This is uh, your family, your wife and your two kids, and then your mom, and that's a that's a pretty cool picture there. That's at the horse fair too, I believe. You're in kind of a green shirt. Yep, I believe that's another horse fair one, and yeah, uh, always represented PLA, and it was a great experience. So. All right, yeah. Here's some more ads, gold, just the gold rush and gold sensation. Here's another cart picture. Yeah, you guys kept cart alive. Here's the classic picture of uh, of two year old uh, Ghost of Gold with John. That's when he won. He won halter as a two year old. I know he was known as a performance stallion, but he did win halter, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. And uh, him and. Uh Gold Rush for both the same age. That goes all the way back to the first quarter when my mom went to the Rogers and right. Cross and their two best mares. So uh, they were always uh, competing against each other. And like I said, Goldie was a little more refined and had more of the dish head and stuff. And uh, Rush was a big ball. So. Right. Yeah. No, they were. They couldn't be more opposite. I mean, even in color, you know, one was dark and one was Palomino. So, yeah. And then the one was kind of refined and one was was tanky, but it. Uh, 
it was cool watching you guys show from you know even a baby on so both of them i'm just scrolling through some some of these pictures are really cute i just want people to see them we we don't have time to talk about every single picture of course but uh, there's gold sensation a good picture you're both looking like at the judge you got the hand on the withers and there's jace and uh, jan just the gold rush so while i'm going through these pictures what do you think about prefixes? why don't you talk about some prefixes like when we grew up in wisconsin and minnesota some of the people we showed against and the prefixes you remember and just some of your memories like that yeah early on i remember and like um some of the few ways i remember you know the triple r's and i was actually gonna have you i think you referred that you actually had the triple r's ponies again uh the mauer family from uh, tipton iowa was triple r so i believe it was gail gail mauer that's, that's right yeah and uh Crossroad POAs, and uh, I'm sure you remember who raised Crossroad POAs. Crossroad POAs, yeah. Paul Passy and uh, Joanne. Joanne would uh, keep the Phillies, and he would keep the Colts. So they were uh, they showed babies like crazy. That was their passion, and uh, that was CAs in Rochester, Minnesota. I believe there's a Menard standing where those foals were born now, and because uh, that's why he named his property that, because it was on the cross intersection of two major highways. Uh, an interstate and a big highway right there so uh, and Paul was one of the characters in the POAs so a lot of people may not remember him now he's been gone a while but there was a lot of CAs that won international shows and futurities and went on to do stuff he he made help make gold prince famous you know him and Leonard Lewis before uh, Rogers bought him so yeah, and the one of the line we started off was my brother Jeff he had a I've used pony which is I've used Abigail Abigail, yep. Yep, and uh, Becky's been sending me information about High Views. Becky is uh, Wanda, Howard and Wanda's daughter. They raised several kids in POAs, and, you know, they had the famous High Views, and then they were one of the families that in uh, in the 70s, he went to, uh, I think, the Carl Miles uh, distribution sale or whatever, you know, when he sold out a famous app breeder, and he bought a, a double-bred Prince Plot at, horse kid plot it and brought him into POAs and uh, then all of a sudden he started naming his POAs plot it's and that's where plot it's crusader plot it's rocky socks plot plot it's bobby socks I could go on and on but Wanda used it a lot too and then they kind of quit using the high views uh, so but plot it's basically became a prefix you know it was a bloodline and uh, so that's just kind of an interesting story and you guys had one of the high views so of course i'll do a story about high views and the victors that'll be one of the episodes coming up probably this summer so i'm just scrolling away some of these are duplicates here so i'm getting through the oh there he is i got to go back to him there's uh i'm looking at your stallion from the rogers now tabasco gold and uh he he had a very expressive eye and beautiful head didn't he yeah he did he he was always fun to show and Hulter and Card as well. Right. Uh, really, really did well in the trail class just because that eye and that expression and stuff. And yeah. He, I always go back to the Rogers and just to get the rest of those. Right. Back well, they, the you know, Dean and Jan were heavy into breeding. They, they believe pedigrees count. And uh, look at the unique color on this guy. And he was, if ever one was bred for a cart, you know, he was fluid moving and then that color just, there wasn't a POA colored like him. There probably isn't now either. I mean, those dark legs and the dark, dark color. I mean, there's getting to be more duns and buckskins in the POAs now with the dilute being allowed more, but he's just a unique color. Uh, so we're going to move on again. We're showing a whole bunch of pictures here. I'll get through some of these. So, so uh, how many babies do you have a year up there in Marshfield? Uh, we're actually in Vesper, which is a small time. Oh. outside of Marshfield, but you grew up in Marshfield, or close? Well, uh, the Sheffield original farm was in Marshfield. Oh, okay. So our, our farm is in Marshfield. Um, so, you know, right now we're kind of raising maybe two a year. Um, okay. Back when we were in prime, Grandma would always have about seven of them for me to ride and break every year. So we had, you know, quite an extensive line of broodmares. Right. And uh, that's kind of why I went back, and I like the bloodline of of Tabasco Gold, but most of our broodmares were, you know, fired by Gold Prince. Right. So you guys I, had a good foundation with the Darling Jill and then Gold Prince. Yeah. 
I'm looking at a picture now, Jared. I think it's probably a Hall of Fame picture or something. The whole family's there, you and your little kids and your wife and Judy, and I think that's your dad. And then yep, that looks like the year that uh, Jan just the gold rush went into the Hall of Fame. So okay, so that would have been at a convention. Norm made it to awards banquet. Yeah, yeah to get Norm. So that's Norm on the far right for everybody who wonders who Dan is. He's kind of the silent partner. Right. Uh, you know, because it's always Judy, a lot of horse programs are that way. You know, the guys at home bailing the hay or whatever, you know, and they don't go to the shows, but it seems that way. Uh, but I remember I met Norm. Well, I knew him anyway, but I hardly seen him ever. And at a convention years, years ago, but it was one of the last conventions I've been to. He came up to me and I didn't even know who he was. And he shook my hand and said, I'm Norm Katzenberger. And I just want to thank you for all the research you do. And, you know, because your family's high on the list that I keep updated, you know, and without that, you know, people might not know how many wins it's just hearsay without records, you know? So you guys are well in the top 10. I think you're like sixth or seventh of all time. That's of all the thousands of people that bred champions at the national show. That's an accomplishment. So, okay. I'm clicking through here pretty fast. Now we got some doubles and triples. Like I say, I'm still learning all this technology. So, uh, I'm getting through. I think I'm pretty close, but a lot of history with your family. I could talk for hours and hours about your family, but and you're one of the sponsors tonight. I want to thank you guys for that, for sponsoring this, and uh, I want to try to buy some swag and toss it out in Tulsa to everybody that's there. So, you know, maybe I'll be able to buy a couple hats and shirts or something. So, <laughs> so, so you guys, yep. uh, you show uh, local too. You, you keep show. I mean, you show a lot, some open shows and stuff, don't you? Yeah, we uh, stay pretty busy. We like to show Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Illinois for the PLA Club. So we we have a unique opportunity. There's lots of uh, strong clubs in the area, so we uh, try to make them all. Right. Well, that's cool. Well, Wisconsin's got a lot of horse history, you know. I was teasing before you got on the air about I'm going to call Jared up in the frozen tundra, but uh, that's just because Green Bay and, you know, and <laughs> in Minnesota, I grew up a Vikings fan, so. Are you a Packers fan? Oh, yeah. I don't think you can be from Wisconsin. Well, all right. Oh, you guys own the team, so, yeah. So, <laughs> well, at least you usually have a good quarterback the last 20 years or so, so that's helped you guys. So. Well, Jared, I think I'm going to wrap it up uh, with your segment here and move on, but it was a, a pleasure talking to you. We need to catch up at one of the shows one of these uh, years at a national yep, show or something. Uh, I want to thank you for all you do to promote the breed. Oh, well, like thanks. A lot, of, a lot of this knowledge would be lost. Well, we do, we do well, appreciate it. Thanks. It's because of people like your grandpa and your your mom and then now your family that I try to keep this alive, you know. And, and people are hungry for this, too, I believe. You know, the, the people that are getting in POAs, a, a lot of people don't know there was racing and that, you know, the cart was a lot bigger in POAs than it is now. And, you know, even games. I can remember you and Ghost of Gold flying and showing against the uh, Danielle and Black Swan S, and there was a host of others back then, you know what I mean? The dirt would be flying in the arena. You guys were so fast, you know. And now there's a handful of them maybe, but uh, back then, the 70s and the 80s was kind of the golden years of POAs, you know. But uh, hopefully we can get back to, to that too. It's just it's down everywhere in the horse world. So, uh, But POAs is still going, So, and you're still a big part of it. So, again, thanks uh, to Missy and you for – being sponsors, say hello to your mom. We served some time together on the board, so we <laughs> we got that in common too. So your mom and I. So all right, thanks, Captain. All right, Jared. Evening. Yep, you too. Thanks a lot. Okay, that was Jared Katzenberger from Wisconsin. I've known Jared since one of the earliest kids I've known, along with like Susie Schultz and. Kelly Curtis, there was always those people around, and there was always Jared Katzenberger when I got into POAs. He's about three years younger than me. He was eight in eight and under showing uh, real little. I don't think he was in lead line still when I got in, but he was close. So, you know, and he probably doesn't remember a time without POAs. So, again, I want to thank the JN uh, Pony Farm and the Katzenberger family from Wisconsin. Uh, come on in. We got a guest here. I will. I will yeah. do. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
So I am at the job here, so the crew wanted to make sure I'd set the alarm. That's how late this podcast is going for you. So we have another sponsor tonight, and here he is as a baby. Most people in POAs now know this stallion because uh, he became very famous at a young age, and this is SLS Awesome All Night. And uh, he's a three-year-old stallion now. And this photo, this professional photo here at the Congress, he uh, won his baby class and then won junior champion stallion and then did something that uh, no other POA has ever done before or in the three years since, and that was he became a grand champion as a weanling. Uh, a mare, a filly, or a gilding has never done that, of course. So, And he's the only colt in all these years since 1959 the only POA to ever win grand champion as a weanling. And I was sitting in the stands, and uh, he deserved it. I actually called it to some people sitting around me, some fellow breeders, people like Bob Roseland, I think, was there, and Dean Dean and uh, Corey Damon, Jeremy, that's going to be on here in a little while. And uh, I said, this Colt's probably got a chance to win grand, you know, because he's just so awesome, and no pun intended, but he is. And then, uh, you know, Awesome Colts come from awesome mares, and uh, his mother's on a very, very short list of some of the greatest mares ever. Uh, not just her looks and her show record as a broodmare, showing when in broodmare and stuff, but her foals now. Uh, Shannon bred her in Texas. I always screw up her last name, so I apologize, Shannon, if I mess it up. Sucre, I believe. Uh, but this is Supreme Britches Array uh, with Awesome All Night when they were babies. Of course, they won mare and foal. And uh, she's also had other foals. We'll go into those in another episode. But she's had grand champion, a grand champion mare two time, I believe. And uh, dreams may co- or dreams come true. And uh, but this mare is uh, by uh, J.K. Supreme Scooter, who was also a beautiful baby. He didn't show at the international show, but when he sold in Tulsa. He, I knew he was going to be something too. I remember my dad coming and getting me and saying, "John Anderson's got one of the best babies." at the sale and that was the grandsire to this famous baby so then of course uh salty britches array is this uh, few spot mare's mother she was a grand champion in 1999 and uh, bred by famous breeder lynn puffenbarger and of course she was uh, an own daughter of uh, spanish array the famous quarter horse so and then the sire to this guy is night moves the beautiful black quarter horse stallion i mean you put those two together and you have to get something good and it happened here and there he is you know it's one thing to win the international or the congress as a baby when no one had ever done it in all those years but he came back as a yearling and repeated so that lets you know that the quality is shining through there and he's actually in michigan right now he's bred by shannon in texas but he's standing in michigan at on cue performance horses and uh there he's broke to ride and stuff they're showing him getting him in shape He's a three-year-old now. He's still just as gorgeous now as he was as a baby. And uh, that's Kendi Kemps and Justin Kennedy. Of course, Kendi doesn't need to be introduced. She uh, won versatility, what, 20 times? Uh, but she, <laughs> a lot of times, her and Skip on Nova, so a uh, famous POA kid that's made good as an adult now, showing some good horses. And uh, here's a beautiful picture of him now as he's maturing, coming to you at the camera. And uh, you're going to hear a lot about this guy. He already did. He's, you know, he's already famous for what he's done as winning as a weanling and a yearling. But now he's three. Here's a picture of him, I believe, this winter in the arena. That's basically in his work clothes right there. So uh, he's got a beautiful color, beautiful comp- confirmation, pedigree, second to none. So uh, remember the name SLS, awesome all night. If you haven't heard of him that means you haven't attended a congress in the last three years uh if you haven't heard of him you have now and uh, i can't wait to see his baby so again he's under the guidance of kendy camp and justin kennedy up in michigan at on cue performance horses so we want to thank uh sls awesome all night as being one of the sponsors this evening now we're going to move on to some good friends of mine and we're going to talk some prefixes and uh, I got to give Jeremy a call. So, Jeremy, if you're watching, there's a little lag here. So, by the time you hear me say your name, get ready because I'm going to be dialing you. So, unfortunately for Jeremy, Kansas got knocked out of the Final Four. I don't think the game would have been tonight, but otherwise, I might not have got him on here. So, let me turn up my Bluetooth here. I hope everybody's enjoying the show tonight. Hello. 
Hello, who's this? This is Jeremy. Oh, that's good. That's who I was calling. So <laughs> we're live, Jeremy. We're on uh, Black Hand and Beyond, my POA podcast. We're looking at a picture of a good-looking stallion here with a young woman holding him, and uh, you'll be seeing it. Are you watching this? Yeah, I am. And I'm, ca- I'm staying up with you pretty good. Oh, so good. I got a pretty good connection here. Okay, so I'll blame it on people that have poor internet. Call your <laughs> internet provider and get better. Uh, no, it, there is a lag on this. I told you we'd laugh. So, uh, you know, Jared and I didn't cut it up too much, but uh, we did, you know, we covered a lot of history, a lot of their history. They were a sponsor tonight, so I wanted to cover their program more. But we're going to talk about your family and uh, kind of how you got in POAs, but then you and I are going to chat up uh, some prefixes and stuff too. I didn't put any pictures in here except for a few salties and then all JN and Katzenberger related and then your horses. And uh, so that's what we're gonna gonna do. But uh, I'm kind of gonna let you take over for a minute, Jeremy, and just kind of tell Julie's story and then how you guys kind of got involved in POAs. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, uh, my wife is uh, Julie Stebbins now, but her name was Julie Gilbert. And she grew up in POA. She was the second generation, but, but mostly showed uh, just Kansas, local Kansas shows. Uh, she did go to the international her last year in POA in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1996. You're not supposed so to she, say that because now you aged her. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but we kind of got our start. I was a city kid. I uh, knew nothing about horses. Um, but I married her and I knew she was a package deal. Right. Uh, she, her show mare's name was actually Double Tough Annie. She was a granddaughter of East Acres Double Tough. Right. Came out of Kansas. And, yep. Right. Yep. And then, uh, in 2004, uh, she ended up passing away from a freak accident at the vet. And I saw how devastating it was to Julie. And so... It made an impression on me, so I decided, man, this must be a pretty important thing. I probably need to get into this. Well, that's pretty smart. You're a pretty smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was 2004, um, and her uncle and aunt, uh, Gerald and Lori Meadows, uh, they actually owned Siri Wonder okay. till the end of his life, and they their prefix is MFS for Meadow Farms. Okay, MFS, or what is it, M? MFS. Yeah. Okay. But Gerald had been telling me I needed to get in it, so he uh, gave me a pile of POA magazines and sale catalogs from about mm, 98, 99 to 2004. Okay. And I started looking at those, and uh, I had started studying quarter horse bloodlines, but then I started studying POA bloodlines. And it just so happened, Gerald had been telling me that I needed to get down to Lynn Puffenbarger's in Oklahoma to buy some mares because you need to get a breeding program going. Right. And I I didn't have a clue what that meant. <laughs> uh, but it just so happened that uh, Lynn had his heart attack that year in 2005 oh. and ran a dispersal sale ad in the magazine. Right. So we uh, ended up going down to Cherokee. And I think that's kind of where it all started. I went down there looking for a colt, and Julie thought I was crazy. She goes, you have no idea what a stud's like. Right. But uh, basically went down there, and Lynn had everything for sale pretty much and told me to make a top ten list. <laughs> and <laughs> Your trailer would get filled when you were in Cherokee, let me tell you. If you left the gate open, Lynn would fill it. So. <laughs> oh, Yeah. So we made a top 10 list, and believe it or not, uh, this picture that you're looking at here, this is Salty Stole the Look. Um, he was actually number two on my list. Okay. Um, and then we went back. Uh, I think it was – he was three weeks old on the first visit. Uh, we went back about six weeks later, and I took Gerald and Lori Meadows with me, and then, of course, Julie. And I remember Lori. We were standing in the pasture, and Lori said, I don't want to tell you what to do. But that's the colt I would go with. She right. goes, look at the way he moves and look at the way he goes with his mom. And she, I knew nothing about him being homozygous. Right. You didn't know what LP. a snow cap was or anything. Nobody that. really knew back then, I don't think. Or Lynn, you know, Lynn didn't even know at that point. Right. And uh, 
So that's kind of how we spoke for him and then two other mares. And then uh, Lynn ended up actually, I didn't even own a horse trailer at the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> but Lynn ended up, I drew, I drove a minivan, so I couldn't pull a trailer. Because <laughs> he had, had four, four little, little kids. Four <laughs> little kids because, uh, but uh, to back up a little bit, we had bought a, uh, a Siri Warner daughter just to keep, Julie's mare company, and she did have a did have a baby, um, which was our first foal, and we actually still own her. Okay, but we weren't the breeders of her, and that I, was in a four. I got a roan mare on the picture right now with tall grass. Is that is that uh, one of the first? Yes, this one right here. Yeah, this is a. Uh, believe it or not, I didn't even know what prefixes were, and when I got the uh, re- application for registration, it said MFS, and I go, why would I do that? We're J&J. All right. <laughs> so she ended up being J&J, Poco, Miss Daisy May. Okay. And she's a granddaughter <laughs> of Poco Pixie? Okay, she, yes, she is a granddaughter of Poco Pixie, and she's a double-bred Siri Wonder. Okay. She's a daughter and great-granddaughter. So for the newer Our, POA people out there, uh, Siri Wonder, I believe he was a 1970, but he was a beautiful headed uh, leopard stallion, kind of short. He was in Kansas for a big part of his life at several different places. Uh, you're at Julie's aunt and uncle's and uh, McLaren's for a lot of years. He did <clears> a lot of good at McLaren's and uh, had some famous POAs. Beautiful headed stallion, like I said. He came out of uh, Arizona from the Paula Cooper program, the series. So uh, yeah. Yep, and then uh, Poco Pixie won the, I knew her the day she hit the ground, basically, a good friend of mine, Marcy, I grew up Marcy Kruger, she actually won the Futurity in 86, I'd showed against that filly all year with Ruby Tough Dots, and uh, I won't, I did pretty well against her, but when it came to the Futurity, her neck was so clean and long, and Marcy really presented her, and she won the Slick Sire that year, and uh, this is, so one of your first mares, that's her heritage there. So, yeah, granddaughter. <laughs> granddaughter, yeah. And uh, I'm skipping through some pictures here because I'm going to go back to. Okay. okay. So after you bought that colt and you so st- Lynn, tell that story. Lynn brought him. Okay, Lynn, Lynn ended up delivering uh, three mares and two colts. And one of them was Salty Stole the Look on uh, Labor Day in 2005. And so that's how we got our start. Uh, they weren't halter broke. <laughs> the mares were barely halter broke. Right. <laughs> the colts weren't halter broke, but uh, oh, good memories. Good memories. There. We uh, he was he was just good minded colt. Honestly, he was very right. curious. Right. You could walk out, and he'd walk up to you. So he was he is. Uh, oh, how do I describe the temperament? Uh, everybody thinks he's a gelding. Right. We've shown him pretty much his whole entire life with my daughter riding him All and. Right. You really know, showing him in halter. And there's been a lot of salty stallions over the years. Of course, there's been hundreds and hundreds of salty POAs since he started in the, the 50, late 50s, you know, or about 1960, and always kept a huge herd. You know, even in his 80s, what, when he was 84, <clears throat> 85, he had five yep. stallions, Lynn, and all in yep. different <laughs> pastures. But uh, honestly, I'm not just saying this because you're a good friend of mine or anything. <clears throat> I've told you this in person at your place, but he's one of my favorite salty stallions. Just, you know, he's got that iron horse look, you know what I mean? You know, he, he's just got that solid look, and, and he moves out nice, but, you know, he still he holds himself in halter. Of course, he won the International Reserve Grand in 2010, and... Uh, you know, he's a good producer, too, because he's homozygous and everything. You're crossing him on some good mares. But and now you're kind of using him as a foundation, too, for your. But, I mean, there's been some famous Salty Stallions, but Salty Stole the Look is should be right up there in history, you know, just with his looks and what you guys accomplished with him. So, And I appreciate that. We've uh, My wife has put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into him. Right, she <laughs> has, yeah. Yeah. <I>, <laughs> You guys, you know, you kind of learned how to fit there in 2009, 2010. I, I for, let's go back a little bit. So, Lynn, okay. my dad and I held a production sale, not from our herd because we didn't have a big enough herd, but we held a kind of a promotional sale in 2004. And uh, Lynn came in Wilmer, Minnesota, and uh, we had uh, 80 some POAs consigned. It was a spring sale. Lynn drove all the way up from Oklahoma, and I, I put him in a hotel room. He loved that. You know, I treated him like royalty, and he loved his POAs going all over the country. He'd go to sales wherever to promote his POAs. And uh, then we did it again in 06. Tommy came with him in 80, in uh, 04, his son Tommy. And then in, 
in 06, he shows up with these two young guys, you know, and I just think, you know, they're both hands, you know, and, and Joey, I ended up knowing pretty well. He's bought two or three vehicles from him. Me and him's stretched the miles of the fence together now, you know, but uh, you were with the other guy and you're running around with this camera. And I'm like, well, that guy working for Lynn, he's taking a lot of pictures. <laughs> and that was I, right after you bought Buddy. So, Yeah, and I, that was kind of my, I got thrown into the fire experience of handling horses right i didn't know anything and i think lynn brought about 10 two-year-olds that year yeah he did and uh we were we were uh brushing them and everything getting them ready for the sale and after that i figured i could handle about anything right well i remember he had them all tied up to the one side of his uh open air stock trailer you know the old yellow stock trailer and i'm thinking if all 10 of these start pulling at once this could be <laughs> they might be down the highway you know with this trailer but so but yeah that's how we met you took a really good picture i, I wish i could have had that tonight but there's only so many hours in the day you know but you took a headshot of kiddo because you guys drove over the 40 some mile trek over to our place and I trotted kiddo down and he was an older stallion then already, you know, well, he was in 06, he would have been 20. So he was mm -hmm. 20 years old and, uh, he was reaching his end of breeding, but he still looked pretty good. You got a really good headshot of him. So, uh, that was good, but that's how you and I met. And then when I moved to Oklahoma, the first guy to meet me in Oklahoma was this guy from Kansas and it was you, you and I unloaded that trailer in about 10 <laughs> yep. minutes and we unloaded a whole household of goods. <laughs> And, you know, and that was pretty cool. So that's kind of why I'm giving you the sponsorship tonight, too. You're not really a sponsor, but I'm highlighting you early on. And, you know, I think you guys need a little publicity. You raised some good babies, and you and Julie's worked hard for POAs and kept keep promoting it in Kansas. You know, and we need to keep these state clubs going. You guys have tried to keep Kansas together, you know, with other families, of course. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, now we're looking at a mare. Tell the story about Lynn saying you needed some good mares and uh, to breed to that stallion and, and talk about her bloodlines. Okay, so when on my, uh, see, my second visit, when I picked Buddy out finally and told him that was the colt I wanted, we went to another pasture, and there was this bay filly standing on a hill, and I couldn't take my eye off of her, and I, said, I, I go, well, well, who's that? And Lynn said, well, that's the uh, last Spanish Array baby I'll have. And then he proceeded to tell us Spanish Array had passed away. Well, I was on a limited budget. She was way out of my budget at that time. Right, an own daughter of Spanish Array, so, yeah. And the last one. <laughs> the last well, one. Then, well, then in 2007, uh, I had made several visits to Cherokee by that time, and uh right. I saw this Bay mare again, this Bay Philly, and I called Lynn and I said, who's the Bay Philly out there? And he goes, well, that's that Spanish Array daughter. And uh, he said, you need to buy her. She'd really be good for your stud. And I said, I don't know if I can afford her. <laughs> right. But he said, he goes, well, we'll make it affordable. So <laughs> that I, paid like more. That. I, I paid more for us. I can tell everyone, though, I paid more for a solid back then than colors were going for right but yeah. but i i knew she was the kind of mare that uh could put us on the map and i i felt like the cross would be good right and i remember i remember i i bought her and she was in the trailer and i stopped it uh let julie's uncle gerald meadows climbed in the trailer and looked at her and he goes either you're crazy or you know something i said this mare's gonna have my first champion <laughs> and she did <laughs> and we're looking at her right now and she, yeah, and, in 2012 and, Picture. This is her fir her first daughter, um, who was born in 2010. Julie actually got to deliver her in a snowstorm, basically. Um, this is J&J, &J, Spanish-looking lady. Yeah. And uh, Pat Burton showed us for her this year and at the fraternity, and she won the two-year-old halter fraternity this year. Right. And she had and she, some, some close misses. Was she second as a baby, wasn't she? At the Yeah, she was uh, second as a baby, and then um yearling year she was you know she was a little she wasn't quite leveled out but then right. she leveled out by her two-year-old year um and then she really showed her uh spanish array breeding i always felt like oh yeah well this mare if the judge is lazy 
he's going to lose this mare because she looks really nice and everything and profile you know she's got that huge hip so like you said she didn't level out for a long time but when you walk behind her like you're supposed to do <laughs> you know you yeah. see the inside gaskin and the wide hip and a wow you know that puts her in an elite set of a halter mare she you know she was so wide across the hip well she still is you still have her but you know when she was in her prime and showing and uh i'm gonna back up a step because that's okay. her as a two-year-old but here she is i think in the middle you're holding her and i believe julie's holding one of your early ones there's a good story and then lynn's hold you guys are outside of uh, the alfalfa county fairgrounds i believe in cherokee okay i haven't seen the picture but i know which one. yeah here we go there you go um Julie is actually holding uh, J&J looking for cover, who is now my daughter's gaming horse. And she's won, let me think about this, uh, 13 speed event classes over the last three years. At the Congress, yeah. At the Congress. And then I'm holding uh, J&J, Spanish looking lady. Right. And then Lynn is holding, and I should know the name, but it's a salty mare that Jeannie Stucker actually owned for a little while. Okay. And she went back actually to my stud's mother. Okay. Well, that's a great picture. You and Julie, you're all smiling and the sun's hitting your face. Lynn's looking, Lynn's setting up his horse, you know, he's 80 some years old and he's setting up his horse in his uh, coveralls, you know, or his, his jeans there. That's, that's Lynn, yep. you know, <laughs> so he was always like that. So a lot of people that knew Lynn later in life didn't know he was, he showed a lot, you know, he showed grand champions and, and not only his stuff he bred, but other stuff. And, you know, then when he got older, he let other people do it for him. But uh, so these two were your first two babies, weren't they? Yeah. yeah uh, the J and J looking for cover was our first baby out of Salty Stole the Look in 2009. And okay. uh, she's actually a daughter, a granddaughter of HR's cover girl. Okay. Uh, Who was so this a national Mar champion, Chief Little Bridge's daughter. Yeah, yeah, she has a lot of, she's actually 25%. Chief Little Bridge's bloodline still. Okay. I think I got then, some pictures of her too here. I'm going to scroll through here. Okay. And, uh, well, let's go back because I'm missing a lot of pictures. So. Uh, okay. All right. Here's a picture of your, your little ones when they were still little. So your four, okay. four kids. This was actually, that picture was actually taken at a Kansas show, uh, Buddy's Yearling Year. And this just goes to show you that type of temperament that he has i mean he just never really went through that real study period even though he was a breeding stud right and he was born to be one with his color and then his body ended up you know he he uh, when you guys started conditioning him uh who's some of the people you looked f towards you know for like conditioning and stuff that kind of gave you and julie some advice um yeah i'd like to thank a few people um aaron brown was probably actually the first person who really helped us with fitting um, kind of hooked up with us at the regional in Kansas in 2008 and right. uh, just really kind of shared some of her secrets and tips on how to get him in condition. And we were, we were actually sending pictures to her about uh, every three, four days. Right. And we had six weeks to Congress and he did end up getting second in the class that year. Okay. And we put on a bunch of, bunch of good weight with her tips and she's just been a real help as far as the conditioning goes right and well, then, she's a real pro you know she can condition them and she's just a good presenter you know and so, they're the t and e prefix T &E, we're talking yeah. prefix yep t and e so there's a lot of t and e's out there yeah and, and then in uh 2010 because of our black philly the j and j spanish looking for lady uh, our looking lady right um we hooked my wife had actually worked for O.J. Martins, who's in the Hall of Fame as both a breeder and a judge. Right. Um, he, uh, she had actually worked for him as a stall hand before oh. we got married, but he, we hooked back up with him because he saw this filly and just couldn't believe how good of a POA <laughs> filly she was. Yeah. And so we actually got to be uh, in his barn the last two years of his life. So wow. we, we got the experience of a lifetime and got advice of a lifetime. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, because he every was a day. showman, you know. I mean, he was he's in the Hall yeah. of Fame, as you said, as a judge and a breeder, but I have hundreds of pictures of him holding horses from Cadillac magazines, you know, apps, famous Appaloosas, where he's, you know, O.J.'s always holding them at halter. So. And he, he uh, I'd tell a little story, but he, he noticed his 
noticed every little detail. I remember one time we got a trim job done and he was sitting on a bench probably about 15 foot away. And he told the, he told the farrier, he goes, that uh, right front's off an eighth of an inch. <laughs> and the farrier's like, uh, I don't know about that. So he pulled out his little measure and sure enough, it was an eighth of an inch. That's a horseman there. Yeah. He'd been around <laughs> horses his whole life and doing it professionally. And you know, another story to tie this all in, and I know you're aware of this, Jeremy, but uh, most people won't be. He actually had POAs way back, you know, before before Julian, you were probably born, you know. <laughs> I mean, early. Uh, yeah, he, he actually started in POAs before he went to Appaloosa. Right, and since we're talking prefixes, he had the 4J prefix yes. in Kansas. Of course, Hutchison, Kansas is one of those towns. You know, you have Decatur, Illinois, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, Edmond, Oklahoma. There's, you know, Riverside, California. There's quite a few towns in the country that are, but Hutchison was that way. You know, it was a big, a bedrock for POA activity. And uh, 4J Leopard Boy, he owned, and that's, I have a list, uh, I don't have it with me tonight, but uh, a list of all the registered farm names and stuff, and that was early, he, he was in the 50s with 4J, and of course 4J Leopard Boy ties into Kansas, and then his daughter 4E Leopard Queen, and uh, the Denny's, Denny Girls. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Cheeseboro's that had the Pond Cold Cream Company, she was, Anna Claire was on the board of directors, a big promoter from New York, they they helped make 4J Leopard Boy uh, famous, and the Langleys from Minnesota also, I believe, had him. And uh, but here OJ hung a prefix on him way back then, and then went on to be a famous Appaloosa guy. So uh, yeah. yeah, and then ties in with you guys, you know, and <laughs> helped you guys your young career. So yeah, that's that's a really cool story. So uh, and then probably if I follow my timeline a little bit, probably the last one of the last things that made a big impression on our breeding program, I. In 2011, I visited uh, Roseland Ranch, Bob Roseland. Right. And uh, by that time, before I had fallen in love with the Skipper W breeding, just studying the Wees Camp line breeding program, and just I like the look of them. And uh, I went to Bob's, and it was like being in a candy store for Skipper <laughs> W bred horses. Right. He loves the Skipper W breds, you know, <laughs> and and so, and the Prince. You know, the Prince Fury, he had, he had the Prince Fury stuff, and that's Wee's Camp, too, of course, Prince Plotted. So uh, we're looking at your one of your young stag. Well, he's not so young now. How old is uh, your leopard Okay, horse? so this is Silent Review. He's uh, six-year-old now. He's got his permanent papers. Okay. Um, and he traces the Skipper W 78 times, if you can believe that. <laughs> 78 um, times, wow. I'd tell a little story about him. I, I usually make a yearly visit up to Bob's just to look at babies. And I saw him as about a, I think he was a five or six week old colt. And I told Julie, I was look, I was looking for a really good headed, um, something I just level top line, kind of something I thought would cross on my stole to look daughters really well. Right. So I picked him out. I, I told Bob I wanted him. And then, uh, this is a headshot of him. Yeah, well, look at that little head. I mean, that looks like a yearling. That's him. How long ago was that picture taken? Uh, that was actually last winter, so he's <laughs> five there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he's a perfect cross on especially the Spanish-looking lady, Itzy, right, you guys call her. Uh -huh. But uh, perfect because, like you said, he's a little smoother, and, uh, you know, he's got that beautiful head, and, uh, and it's proven. We're going to show some pictures too, but I think the next few years is going to be – pretty cool for you guys because you're starting to you know you had to set the foundation it don't happen overnight you know especially you came in fresh at zero you know what i mean you learned yeah. about horses and everything like you said you were a city kid and uh, so it's amazing and i, I think since you know we're, we kind of you did this podcast kind of to branch off of the poa history but i think the thing i'd like to encourage new people is the thing that i i did and you know hooked up with you I knew a lot of history, Lynn. I tried to learn from those people that have been in the breed, and then I bought a collection of magazines. Right. And I, for, I don't have them all, but I have pretty close to them all in sale catalogs. And I spent hundreds of hours just studying what makes the POA the POA. Right. That's, and I think, that's what I did, except I did it as a kid. You know what I mean? You did the same thing as an adult. You know, and it, in the sales catalogs is a treasure trove of knowledge because there's a pedigree yeah. <laughs> and then there's a write-up. I read so many Doc Nemmer's write-ups, you know, and write-ups by Lynn. And sometimes you could tell Lynn wasn't writing it because he'd write it as the horse, 
you know, like I'm pretty flashy and come pick me out, you know? And I'm like, Oh, Len must've been sick that year or something. Somebody wrote his, you know, and then he might write one line, you know? And, but anyway, you found out who owned them, when the height, the age, everything, you know, even if there wasn't a photo and you, you went ahead and did the same thing. And, uh, that really, ha- to me, it's invaluable as a breeder. You, if you don't know what's happened, how are you going to move on? you know, and know what to get and what to, what you like. And you may have a different eye than somebody else, you know, everybody else's eyes a little different, but if you don't know what's out there and what it's done, you can't hone it into your program, you know, like you have done now. So I skipped. And one thing I, go ahead. I was going to say one thing that we've tried to do is, uh, keep the, some of the foundation lines from POA. We have, you know, the ladies warrior chief little britches, the East acres, double tough, Right. And just kind of try to keep some of that foundation with the new still, so we can still kind of keep, right. you know, what makes the POA the POA, I guess. Right. Well, and that keeps the height too, you know what I mean? And and Bob's doing that with through the Lannan Series Super Spot, and that's, you know, maybe eight generations away now, but we're looking at a mare now that came from Bob's in those okay, big this... spots. You know, he's getting, <laughs> he's getting known for his, he's been in POAs forever, Bob, but P, I seen the other day, somebody said, I thought that was a rolls on with those big spots. Did you see that on Facebook? And I laughed, you know, cause it was colored <laughs> something like this mare. So. Yeah. And his, his spots, he'll tell you, go back to the Siri bloodlines and his breeding program. For sure. Well, plot it's go, go. Well, he had, you know, stuff from her and then she was landing series super spot. And of course he's a grandson of Siri chief. Super spot. And this, this mare is actually, her name is Sure Summer. Uh, she's actually out of a Skipper W bred, about a 56 inch quarter horse, and then uh, his dirty dealer. So a few right. spots. So a few spot to a quarter horse, the classic cross. Get that wild color. <laughs> right. And that's one of your nice mares there. And uh, here's another mare. This is another Bob mare, the mare with the, the blaze. You'll see her in a minute, the roan, the one okay. I really liked when you had her in uh, Tulsa. Okay, uh, I think it hadn't a... flipped up, but that's uh, Skip So Fine. Okay. Uh, she's a T- CT's two-eyed reflection daughter um, out of a Skipper W quarter mare again. Right, and she and, ended uh, up Philly with the funny, the little funny face mark, the the strip, right? Yep. Yeah, and that's yeah, kind her. of a lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah, she, you can't see it. It just looks like a blaze at this angle, but that's and, that Philly that year, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And Jackie Guthrie owns that Philly now. She, well, that tells you right there. If people like Jackie Guthrie starts buying stuff from you, your, your foundation is set, and you're, now you're going on to the next level. So you're starting to sell your babies pretty quick, ain't you, up there? Yeah, the yes, we are. Uh, it seemed like we struggled for a long time, but our two babies this year have sold on day one, so right. it's been pretty exciting. Yeah, when people just find out about you and stuff, and, oh, man, they raise good babies, I like to tell people, yeah, it's an overnight success that took 10 years to happen, you know, (laughs) because that's it takes years to happen. You just can't, you know, unless you buy into it, and then you never really, you don't know what you're going to get either, but. And this this is another, this is actually the first uh, Rosalind mare I bought. I bought her as a three-month-old solid but i knew she'd eventually color she was out of a few spot right and She's her name a, i named her i'm i'm uh bucking dirty bucking dirty and this, yeah and she's a little, little ain't she she's short mare yeah she's a 51 inch mare um and this little filly here is owned by uh nikki c hafer and her daughter bianca and okay. they that's j and j so bucking hot she's out of the uh leopard stud she's out of leopard stud yeah yeah, and that's a beautiful little filly, too. I remember you send me, just so people know, we're pretty good friends, and you send me pictures of babies all the time, and I watch them grow up, and they're on my camera roll. You know, I, could, <laughs> I got a, you got five-year-olds you have now. I got pictures of them when they were babies. Well, Itsy, I had, you know, you uh-huh. showed me videos of her as a baby, come down to Cherokee and showed me. But this little filly, she's chromed up in a color, you know, homozygous and tiny. She's got a tiny little head. Yeah, you're going to hear more from her. So, I think she's projected to be about 48 inches tall. Yeah, and she's going to be that wide, too. She's going to yep. be a powerhouse. <laughs> so here's your daughter. She, uh, Your daughter got into speed events. Why don't you talk about her a little bit? And uh, okay. she, Here she's showing this, the young colt. But. Okay, I see that. This is my daughter, my youngest, Kira. Um, and that is her. She paid for this colt. She uh, bought him from Pat Burton. This is uh, I Fly First Class. He's a... A POA son of I, 
I uh, fly the fly red the eye. eye. Yeah, who was a supreme champion horse, uh, Norm. Norm Stevenson. Stevenson bred, and then yeah. uh, Pat actually on the mare after Norm passed away. But anyway, this is uh, her young stud. Uh, she got into speed events probably about five years ago. Uh, I'd say due to the influence of the Denny's. Okay. Um, she started going riding over there, and uh, another Hutchison they, family, yeah. <laughs> and they've been in it forever, right? And they uh, really just kind of fine tuned her, just really trained her and tuned her speed events. So, right. well, going uh, back to the history of this colt, you know, uh, Norm was kind of like Lynn. They were young men that got into the POAs around the same time, and uh, kind of fiery young guys. They were both on the board of directors together in the '60s, and they were in their 30s at the time. And uh, Norm believed in putting in a lot of quarter horse bloodlines. And there for the 80s and 90s, he kind of disappeared, but he was still breeding a bunch of POAs and keeping mares and stuff. And Dragadins is his prefix. I know there's a lot of people watching tonight that grew up riding Dragadins. And um, he this... used Spanish Array too, didn't he? He, for a while, not as much as Lynn, but he bred a few mares to Spanish Array. This colt actually uh, goes back to a Dragadin mare. Right. Uh, real close and this colt is on the bottom side double bred spanish array right so the story so. goes i believe norm you know he knew he was getting up there in age in the 80s in his 80s and he took i think five didn't he five or six mares. uh five or six mares yeah. yes he and picked, bred them to the fly yeah. the red eye yeah he had picked some of some were tx uh chip and array and i think one was an own daughter of spanish array and I believe Fly the Red Eye at the time was the last supreme champion in the quarter horse breed. I don't know if he still is, but he uh, and he's I, short. He's fourteen two, I think. And yeah, uh, and I, number forty seven or forty eight. I don't remember supreme champion. Right, and uh, he, uh, you know, that was you're going to get speed, but he was a supreme champion, so he had to do other things too, of course. But I, I think great things are going to come with this colt, and and then of course Norm passed away before that's the end of the story. But he passed away, and the Dragonins heritage is is done there. But uh, these all could have been named Dragonins, you know, with the prefix because they were all bred by that man. But uh, Pat got a hold of most of the mares and kind of dispersed the babies, and I know they're floating around. I believe Danielle's got one, doesn't she, in Minnesota? Uh -huh. you know, I believe so. Yeah, and you're gonna hear about these fly the red eye babies. They're uh, you know, they're just going to get better as they get older. So, and your daughter's got one, and he's still intact. He's two, right? Yeah, I believe he's the only one intact is still. Okay. Um, I think her plan is to breed. She's got one this summer. She'd like to go to Congress one last time with her mare, but I think right. the plan is to cross the two together. And we're going to get to some pictures of that mare here pretty quick. Well, we've seen her as a young filly, but uh, now we got a mare at the water or okay. the feed trough here. This is a... Uh, I have a granddaughter now. She's nine months old, yeah. and uh, this is her future mount. This is a BDK Zippity Doodah. She came from Barbara Klein in Colorado, who's been in POA for many years. Okay, and she's a daughter of Zip and Gold, or Zip and Gold. Yeah, yeah. so she's okay. Gold Prince bred. Right. Yeah, Zip and Gold came from Rogers and uh, Campbell Zippo son, and then of course the Gardner family made him a household name. So Zip and Gold. He's got some records in the POA breed as a sire. I think there might be. Is that her there too? It, uh, it's a fence. It's here. a gate. It'll catch up in a minute. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's her. That's a pretty tanky POA. Okay, there. just a minute here. Okay. Uh, actually, I threw this in there because this is one of the uh, youngest salty mares. We we have two salty mares on the place. My daughter owns both of them. But okay. this is actually. Uh, we salty zip and array. She's a salty array daughter and a granddaughter of the great RY mare that Pat Burton showed. Oh, okay. Fancy Jewel. Yes, uh, Fancy Jewel. Grand champion mare. Yep. She won a, a number of grand, I, like 48 grands or something like that at shows. And then she did win a uh, grand at the con well before Congress, but the international show. So, okay. So that's a lot of prefixes in her. So here's a yes. cool picture. <laughs> Probably a mare by the pond there, okay. by the water, reflection uh, Okay. That's the other salty mare. Her name is uh, Salty Mighty Legacy. Mighty we Legacy. actually, we bought her as a two-year-old, not from Lynn. He had, he had actually sold her as a weanling, but we bought her as a two-year-old. 
and she was my daughter's uh, lead line mount. Okay, I remember her from a young age, Mighty Legacy. Yeah. So. And uh, she goes back real close to Ladies Warrior, Jackpot Image. Right. A lot of the foundation breeding. Yeah. We got a picture outside of Arena now with a couple of your. Okay. POIs. Okay. This was actually the last show for my oldest daughter, Haley. Okay. Who's uh, on the left there. Or wait, uh, let me see. They look so much like, oh yeah, on the left. <laughs> um, she's actually on Salty Stole the Look there. So that kind of shows you right. his disposition standing next to a mare. Right. His, and that and mare this is, is his daughter, right? Yeah, that's his daughter. And she's a full sister to the black mare, J&J, Spanish looking lady. Right. And she's looking angel. Spanish looking angel. That's one of my favorites. I've always told you that. Uh, I like her, you know, her body and just the way she ties in. And uh, I like her. When, when you breed her to your little leopard, I want to come and visit that baby because I think it'll be pretty cool. So, uh, And we're excited about her future as a yeah. broodmare. <laughs> Here's a picture of all the kids now growing up, and most of them have uh, people with them, and there's even a little baby by the Christmas tree here. So this is your okay. extended family, Jeremy. So I wanted to throw this picture in there. This, Yeah, this is Christmas. Um, that's my son, Jeremy, on the right. My other son next to him, Jordan, and his wife, Brianne, and uh, their their little daughter, Lainey. And then my oldest daughter, Haley, and her fiancé, Richie. My youngest daughter, Kira, and her pretty serious boyfriend there, John. Pretty serious. I'm sure so. they all like that. Pretty serious. <laughs> so, uh, man, you and Julie are grandparents. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, we got married young. We did this. I was 19. She was 20. And, uh, we started having kids about a year later and wow. every year we had one for about four years. Right. And I, I don't know where the years went. Now they're adults. <laughs> My dad still calls you the kid from Kansas. How's that kid from <laughs> Kansas then? I'm like, he's a grandson, a granddad now. Oh, wow. Well, I'm 82, you know, he's, he's like, <laughs> So we're skipping through here. We're going to move okay. on. Uh, I'm going to go back through these mares that you got from Bob there. Okay, here's a, here's a snow cap, it looks like, you know, outside the arena. Okay. This many. Uh, I'm catching up to you, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, this I just threw this picture in here. This is actually out of a salty mare. His dam is salty blackout, and then he's out of our – leopard horse silent review okay this is this is mandy connor's boy okay. and her dad dennis but this is actually a yearling gelding here okay. um his name is uh let me look here i wrote this down um <laughs> j and j skip the black oh skip but the uh black, yeah. I, I just i just kind of threw it in we're we're pretty big on dispositions uh All right well, that's what POA has to be. You got to start with the disposition and then the confirmation. Of course, colors always last, you know, even though that's the main thing you need color, but disposition, then the build and the ability and then the color. That's how I always looked at it. But yeah, uh, if nobody wants to own your stuff, they could be the prettiest. I can tell stories. I won't do it, you know, but of some pretty ponies and horses. And man, you went to them and they laid their ears back and, you know, what good were they then? So, you yeah. know. Okay, so I here's, your, just threw this one. here's your young okay. stallion now, and the, he's got a quite a heritage too here. Okay, is it the solid? Yeah, that's that's your okay. the famous um, mare's son. So. Okay, so the funny story on him is after Lynn passed away, I um, had gone down there several times to help with this disbursement of horses, and uh, his mother is actually Salty Bridges Array, who Lynn told me m numerous times he felt was like the best mare he'd ever raised right um she was a grand champion and according to him he she he she won the english and western pleasure fraternity unanimously right well she did um, she won uh amy burton showed her when she won okay yeah so uh, this is her her last full and i named him uh salty reflection um he was supposed to be a filly, and I picked him up in the dark and uh, got home the next day and found out he was a colt. Your daughter but, called you, didn't she, or something? Said, hey, uh, yeah, <laughs> she called. She called, and we were at the actually at the tractor supply, and uh, she's like, uh, "This isn't a filly. I thought we had a filly." So, 
Yeah, because you um, had he, plans to cross him probably to the leopard or to the or to the to the snow cap, whatever. You yeah. can go because he's going to be a little dude for sure. He's tiny. He's just built structurally yeah. small, you know. But he's uh he's forty seven, and I think he may mature about forty eight. He's three now and about so, as wide as he is. So oh. you got the two, the six year old stallion that's making a name for himself from Bob, and then you have of course. The, the old man now you know it's funny to call him an old man but he is i know i can't yeah, 16 <laughs> 16 you guys had him since he was a little baby but uh now you got some cool interesting stuff i mean this one here you know just his genetics alone and he's got such a tiny little head and then uh your daughter's colt you know the the norm stevenson bred one so i mean you got some interesting you could really play mad scientist with some of these crosses if you wanted to you know so. Yeah, I'm having a hard time deciding mares to studs this year. It's a, it's kind of it's a good problem but a bad problem, I guess. Right. That's a yep. Uh, we're gonna get into some babies now, Jeremy. Okay. Here's that uh, the the loud leopard with the big spots. Here, here is her bay colt. Okay. I believe Marcy bought him, didn't she? Or yes, Mark. Uh, is it Marcy Lysaker? Yep. She grew up in Marcy uh, Kruger in POAs. Yep. This is J and J Ultimate Review. Okay. And uh, this was actually the second colt I had out of this mare and the uh, leopard stud. But just, uh, I, I'll i credit this to Kent, but uh, <laughs> one thing that he always told me was, one thing we've been trying to do probably about the last seven, eight years is work on the heads and then just really work on the top lines. Right. And so I felt like this full crop here, we got two days, our best heads in top lines i would say i i think so yeah i you know you've had the bodies for a long time and now you're starting to get here's the filly with the with the so 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 fine or whatever her mother's name okay. is or what yeah i think yeah and we called her j and j a fine reflection and uh -huh. she's now on like i said by jackie guthrie in wisconsin you'll see more of her jackie's plan is to show her she said right so. she she's got the looks i've seen her as a baby too she yeah she's awesome um Okay, now I think it's the buckskin filly, the snowcat filly. She's stretching out on the fence there. Oh, uh, okay. Yep, that's J and J. So bucking hot, like I said earlier, she's owned by Nikki and Bianca C. Hafer right. up in Wisconsin. Right. And I, I think they plan to show her, so you'll see more of her. Right. And she's but, uh, one of those when she's four. I mean, you might as well just put it type in type now. You know what I mean? Entered in the computer because when she's four, she's going to be hard to get around in that small mare class. You know, I mean, she just is. I mean, she's got the flash, and, and a plus to it is she's got the color. You know, she could, uh, she's going to be a great baby mama, you know, but uh, hopefully she shows too, so. Yeah, yeah. and she's going to be about, like I say, she's only going to be about 48 inches. So we're still still trying to raise some small ones here. Right. <laughs> I think we got Itsy's uh, maybe yearling here with Susan. Okay. Oh, actually, that is uh, Itsy's. Uh, daughter that she's two now this is last year right um she's out of silent review and then j and j spanish looking lady itsy yeah. um this is j and j not filling chocolate and uh yeah susan wells was nice enough to show her for us at congress right. and maturity susan lives in kansas right or yes yeah yes she does yeah, she's been showing poas for quite a while now so uh Okay, now we're, you know, we threw this picture in here. I have this picture and you got it. This is, uh, we're going to talk about prefixes a little bit, like, you know, the pros and the cons of having prefixes. Like Lynn, one of your mentors, you know, he was famous for the salties and he stuck to it. And here's a stallion that put him kind of back on the map, you know, Chief Little Bridge. I don't want to get too much into Lynn's program because it'll be a whole episode down the road right you know and i'll probably have yeah. you back then as a guest too but uh and I hopefully i get tommy in here live he only lives 50 miles from here so uh lynn's son but this is a uh, salty gotta look of course he was a registered appaloosa with a different name and lynn just stamped his salty title on him but he was an appaloosa but he did hardship him you know but it's a uh, lynn lynn did that with salty three bars too you know they he uh saint nick's good bars is the name bishop picked for him and lynn bought him as i think a two-year-old or something and said no he wasn't registered yet well if you want to keep the name you better register him you know if you want to keep your prefix uh, <laughs> uh lynn put salty on him and he went on to be a grand champion you know but 
Uh, so, but both of these weren't bred by the salty guy, but he made them both famous. You know, they, this horse is in the Hall of Fame, and, of course, he's a big part of your program. Got to look. Uh, yeah, and I, I threw him in there because Buddy is a – they call him a genetic son because he's a double grandson. And that was part of the reason we did the stole the look because we right. felt like he stole the look from right. God a look. Because <laughs> here's Buddy's sire we're looking at now. And, of course, he's out of shape. He looks like a bellied-up mare or a gilding, but he's running in thick grass in a Oklahoma spring or that's, summer. And Yeah, uh, that's uh, Salty Skip the Britches. Skip the Britches, yeah. And he was – uh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say he was a God a look son, but he was also a two-eyed Jack great-grandson, I believe. Right, yeah, from two-eyed Tommy and uh or two-eyed thomas right and then uh-huh. uh, yeah and then of course he's got britches close too so he's got chief little britches pretty close so that keeps the heritage going because like you said you like to keep that heritage in there so now here's a salty array so lynn uh, lynn kept two at the end there for a while he had two sons of gotta look and he had two sons of spanish array solar array and this was array salty okay. array so this is him when he won a reserve grand, I believe. Yeah, 2009. 2009. Yeah, you were 2010 with the Salty yep. Stud, and this one was 2009. I actually named him Salty Array, and then I find a re- registration form at Lynn's house, you know, because he sent him up to me as a two-year-old <laughs> not registered, and he'd been at the prison. You know, they broke him to lead and stuff, so he had some bad habits but and stuff. But anyway, he... Uh, he didn't have a name. Lynn it was sick that year. And uh, I said, I'm just going to name him Salty Array. And he said, oh, okay, well, then I see he, I forget, but he had a name picked out, but never told me, you know, <laughs> never filled think, it in. Yeah, like a raisin or something? Yeah, like Salty <laughs> or Raisin or something, yeah. So, and of course, he won the international many times, and Lynn kept him. He was a showy looking, you know, he had some holes in him, but he was a showy looking stallion, you know, and real horsey. I mean, Lynn bred little bitty pony mares to to Spanish Array to keep them in height, but he did. He kept he kept them all in height, you know, and he only had a couple solids, and uh, the mare that helped your foundation. And uh, you know, I, I think, think he, go ahead. I was gonna say I think I think he bred nine times and had two solids, and one of them was my mare. Right, and I believe they were. Uh, well, your mare is a full sister to this guy, right? Yes. And yeah, then she there was. was a full brother to them that was solid that went up to Wisconsin, and that's the only two. And then he had a colt that I believe broke his leg young and didn't yeah. get registered. So every registered foal that wasn't solid uh, ended up being a national champion. That's something that could be an episode in its own, you know, right there. So <laughs> but anyway, uh, okay, here's he- one of my favorite ones of yours. I mean, she's okay. she doesn't have the baby doll head, which I do love baby doll heads, but – I just, uh, I love the way this mare's put together, and I think she's a modern, she looks like a quarter horse, you know, and but she's kept okay. her, and uh, I kept this her is, to the end a little bit. <laughs> uh, this is uh, J&J, Spanish-looking angel. Uh, interesting story about her. Uh, Itsy was three years old, and still to this day, don't know how she got out of a pen, had a freak accident tore her leg up we didn't even know if she was going to make it but right. she ended up you know she's had a great broodmare career right and uh so that day i prayed that mare was bred and i asked god to give me another filly because she only she only fold every other year she wouldn't breed right. when she had a baby on her side and so this was the baby born the next year after the accident so that's why i called her angel angel so it's spanish looking <laughs> lady that was your first really really famous baby you know, huh? you know yeah and then this is her full sister spanish angel right yeah, yeah. spanish looking angel spanish yeah and looking she's, angel yeah this is julie showing her let's see what year was that 2019 in tulsa yeah i remember as, a, as an age mare she was she was uh reserved as a baby only okay. because she, uh, we had a clip, kind of a funny story, but we had a clip uh, lead on, and Julie reached up and hit the clip, and she got loose in the arena. Yeah, so. but she still, yeah. So both those fillies were reserved as babies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And she's that bright red color when she sheds off with that little blanket. So. All right. Well, we got the future here on the screen now, Jeremy. Your, your lead okay. liner coming up here, so I got you granddaughter all right i don't i don't see it but that's that's little uh laney ray laney ray so and, and uh and who's julie's her parents? already 
Who's her friend? Uh, my son, Jordan, and Jordan. his wife, Brianne. Oh, okay. And oh. Julie's already taken her out and showing her the horses. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure she has. Yeah, there's two pictures of her, one crawling around on the carpet and one sitting in the saddle, and she's smiling in the saddle, boy. So, yeah, <laughs> she, she'll be well-mounted, so... Yeah. Yeah. So we're excited. We're excited about the future. Well, that's good. And you're still breeding. How many babies you got coming this spring now? Uh, we have five, possibly six. Counting. Uh, my daughter runs a breeding program too, and her her prefix, since we're on it, is uh, KC. And what? that's because she's got her own prefix. Oh, I would have yeah, made her go with the J and J. What? <laughs> Who's buying the feet now? She's probably paying for some. <laughs> Yeah, the KC because of Kira, and then she names all of hers with the barn name with C. Okay. So. Okay. There's been some KCs, but I don't think it's still a registered prefix. Yeah. You know, I had Dave Morris send me a list of all the prefixes, and I left it on my desk, and it's 9 o'clock now, so I'm not going to leave the camera and get it. But it's like 32 pages of barn names and prefixes over the years. And if you think on a spreadsheet times 32 pages, that's a lot, a lot of prefixes, you know. So the show was supposed to be all about prefixes. We kind of ended up being about JN and JNJ. But, uh, you know, all my episodes, it's going to talk about prefixes anyway, you know. But this one we did kind of hit on how, you know, two of the people that helped you along, Bob Roslin and and Lynn, you got their breeding heavy in your program still. One went without a prefix and one is one of the most prefix, you know, recognizable prefixes ever. Salty Plains Ranch because of the salt plains in, in Cherokee and Alfalfa County. And the salties are as recognized as any POI in history. And then Lynn, or, uh, I mean Bob, he just went more with the pedigrees, the silence and the review, you know what I mean. Uh-huh. And, uh, and the classics. And the classics. And my family decided that too, you know, kind of a personal story, wrapping up a little bit, Jeremy. But, uh, you know, Dad worked in Alaska in the 70s and the 80s and on the pipeline and stuff. And when we started to get in POAs, he wanted to name everything Polar, and like a polar bear and polar dot. Because okay. he worked on the Arctic Circle way up 800 miles from the nearest tree, you know. And uh, we bought some mares that were Triple W breeding. They were triple, that was their name. One was Triple W, I forget what, Cover Girl or something, that, you know, a name like that. And Triple W is Mazzola. Well, the, they were old ph breeding you know pine hills and stuff from the 60s we got them in the 80s well the one had a leopard on her side and dad named him polar dot chief and he grew up to be you know as a yearling you could tell he wasn't the modern poa we already started learning within a year that he wasn't where we wanted to go so we sold those mares while he was registered and mom and i told dad we don't want polar you know mom didn't want it because she didn't want pigeonholed naming colts and you always had to put polar dot in front of everything you know, so the <laughs> famous mayor Sandy Tough Dots that Susie Schultz in uh, Edina, Minnesota showed helped make she made her famous. Susie did. She uh, she was going to be Polar Dot Sandy. Well, she's a famous mayor, you know, supreme champion, uh, producer of uh, champions and stuff. And just think of the different history or if Kiddo Tough would have been polar dot mm-hmm. kiddo you know instead of kiddo tough so you know i, I kind of wish we would have for marketing reasons because look at jbj's and the pals and our and what you can do with the prefix you know once mm-hmm. but you know if you do get you're gonna have a hiccup every once in a while even the great breeders had ones they were ashamed you know Weez camp didn't show everybody all his <laughs> horses you know and uh so but it's kind of funny you know if i ever built the hall of fame if i was handed a blank check or had the money myself to build the hall of fame for the POAs, which we sorely need one. And uh, after 60 some years and I agree. Uh, right. And had, if I was the curator of a museum, uh, for the corners, you know, of course, and some people agree with this, some won't, but you'd have KS's, Santee, Salty, and I'd probably say docs. Now, some people argue, I don't want to make this, you know, a show where people are arguing, but I mean, most people would agree with that. The Salty, Santee, KSs, I mean, they dominate. They're some of the top breeders ever. You know what I mean? And you could say Suncrest, mm-hmm. but if I had my leading breeders list, some of the leading breeders of all time had prefixes. I think the first guy that doesn't have a prefix on the list is like fourth or fifth right now, currently, and that's the Damons. They were a sponsor. Uh, last episode and they didn't go with a prefix they named he's a she's a stuff like that sometimes i'm a he had a lot of i'm a, I'm a silver royal you know 
uh, uh, stuff like that. And so, and I'm a Silverado, of course. But uh, so it's always going to be a debate. But I do think prefixes do help because they're like people are coming on here. I love my J and J ponies. You know, people are making comments. <laughs> I, I love my J and J. So it's kind of funny, you know that. But I'm glad you stuck I, with the prefix. I think it's going to help you in the long run too. So. I think I have to credit you a little bit for that too, because uh, I know we were using it and then you were like, have you registered that with the home office? And I didn't have a clue they registered them. And you're like, you need to get that registered. Right. So in 2010, we became official J and J with the home office. It's on there too. It's on the list. You're 2010. And I think Lynn is like 70 and I know he had grand champions before 70 with the salty prefix. So he got his, he must've decided, figured you know oh i better get it like murfelds were the ninth member of poas and uh, ed murfeld and audrey and then they raised their kid doug in uh oh, i'm drawing a blank but ed jr i think with their kids murfelds is one of the still recognizable prefixes you know the mps murfeld ponies and they were the ninth member to join but their prefix didn't get registered to like 74 well there again they had already the grand champion in 71 was mps so it's almost like a trademark you know what I mean? Because once you do it, you know, you're supposed to own it. So, yeah. Uh, and that I have to credit that too. You know, like I say, her aunt and uncle got me into this and they were using one, even though they don't do a whole lot anymore. But he was like, you'll just be able to trace your ponies when you raise them. Right. And so the, I guess that's why I did it. <laughs> I right. didn't know any better. <laughs> right. And then, and it's just, you know, when one wins or something, you hear the announcer all day, even at a state show or a fair or something, you know, J and J, J and J, it just sticks in your head, you know, and uh, that, that really helps, I think. So I, if I ever got back in it, I don't know. I've been, this is kind of the funny portion of the show, Jeremy, I've been working on some <laughs> prefixes here. So uh, again, this ain't a kid's show, but it won't be too bad. But, you know, I thought maybe name, uh, name my place, Kent's Fine Colts. But that don't really work because that's KFC, you know, so so that ain't going to work, right? So KFC wouldn't work. So then I thought, you know, you know my story. I moved to Oklahoma from Minnesota. I always said I was going to come down to Oklahoma sooner or later, and I was going to retire here. But Lynn pushed me down here, you know, a lot earlier than that. So I come down here, and, uh, of course, it is the Sooner State. So, you know, someday maybe I'll have a farm sooner or later POAs. But what's that stand for? SOL. So that might not be the best. <laughs> and then here's the grand finale. So this is the bad one here. But buy a beautiful property, you know, got deer on the borders and stuff, and you know, name it Whitetail Farms. Well, what's that prefix? WTF. <laughs> so we better not do that. But uh, you know, I don't know if I'll ever raise POAs, but if I do, I'll probably come up to Kansas and uh get some of those spotted ones from you. So well <laughs> I appreciate you being on, Jeremy. We, uh, we've we been on there quite a while. I had a late start tonight, but it's uh, 10 o'clock in the east, so I know I got some people in Florida and stuff watching live. Again, you guys can go on anytime on Facebook. It'll be on POA History, and we'll also put it on, uh, you know, different groups. We can share it, and uh, it'll get on YouTube, not tonight, but remember, I'm almost 50 years old, so I'm technically challenged. It takes me a couple hours to figure out every time to get it on YouTube but it will be on YouTube too. We've had a lot of views on my videos on there are doing good. This is episode three of this uh, podcast. So next week we're going to be talking about uh, the 17th registered POA of all time or 18th. I'm sorry, 18th, uh, Corey Scottish Chieftain. And just his name tells you he's got a cool story and, um, We'll probably have some cool guests that too. So I don't know, Jeremy, you and Jared's going to be hard to, uh, to get, I don't know who I'm going to have to get next week to top this show. So, uh, maybe I'll get well, Julie I'm, or somebody. No. Yeah, there you go. You can tell the story about her getting locked in the bathroom when you had to yeah. save her. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's I've known you guys a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Julie got locked in the bathroom at an international. And if anybody knows me, my birthday's in, uh, that was at a show, right? Yeah. The international show. Yep. And, uh, my birthday's in July and I, when I don't go, when I was had POAs and I didn't go to an international show, I'd be physically upset if I didn't get to go, you know, even as an adult person. So that was the one of the last shows I was at where I actually had a horse there. And uh, that was 06, right? Yeah. I yep. think. And this young couple from Kansas that I just met, he was at my house. His wife's locked in the bathroom. So I'm going to be a hero, 300 pound guy. I'm slamming myself against the door. 
<laughs> trying to get her <laughs> loose. And uh, I think and I finally I told Jeremy, I better stop because I'm bending the, the thing, you know. The, and uh, I was afraid she was going to be stuck in there. And then here come the maintenance guy, and he got her out. But uh, yeah. I think she's, yeah, she was in there about 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes, yeah. Uh, well, maybe she was planning some of these names that you guys ended up naming, some of these J and J's. <laughs> yep. so. So, all right, well, I appreciate Jeremy. you letting me be a guest. Yep, I'll probably come up. Monica and I will probably make a trek up to Sterling again this spring or summer and see those pretty babies. So, All right, we look forward to it. All right, thanks for being a guest. Thanks, Jeremy. All right, thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye. All right, so that was Jeremy from Kansas, the J&J POAs. I want to thank uh, both my guests tonight, Jared Katzenberger from Wisconsin and Jeremy uh, from Kansas, and uh, also our main sponsor tonight. We had JN Farm was a sponsor and uh, also a great guest. I love seeing all those pictures. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, SLS, awesome all night. He's already made a name for himself, two-time grand champion stallion, his first two years of life. And uh, he's going to make a name for himself uh, again uh, competing in uh, his babies. So uh, I want to thank uh, Candy Camps for uh, being a sponsor with him. And uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Like I kind of alluded to, episode four will be next week, week God willing. I stay health, healthy and everything. Uh, my voice is pretty much back to normal. So I'll put a put an episode together next week for you guys, and it'll be uh, Corrette Scottish Chieftain, one of the major five foundation sires. You have Black Hand, Siri Chief, Corrette Scottish Chieftain, uh, Driftwood, or I mean... Uh, Stewart's Danny Boy, and then, of course, Dragon was thrown in there before Danny Boy. So those five, we're going to talk about all of them eventually. Uh, Scottish Chieftain will be the third one since we've already covered Black Hand and, and uh, Siri Chief. And then we'll have a modern guest, too, and talk about things going on in, in POA today. So I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in again. Remember, this will be, it's live right now. I don't edit these. The mistakes and everything are in for you to enjoy all, all week and uh, forever on Facebook. So... Uh, good night, everybody. See you next week.